This is that other story I was telling you about. This is the one about Anansi, the Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And look, it won a Caldecott medal in 1971. It won. Many African stories, whether or not they are about Kwaku Anansi, the Spider-Man, are called spider stories. This book is about how that came to be. Spider stories tell how small, defenseless men or animals outwit others and succeed against great odds. These stories crossed the Atlantic Ocean in the cruel ships that delivered slaves to the Americas. Their descendants still tell some of these stories today. Anansi has become Anansi in the Caribbean Isles while he survives as Aunt Nancy in the southern United States. You will find many African words in this story. If you listen carefully, you can tell what they mean by their sounds. At times, words and phrases are repeated several times. Africans repeat words to make them stronger. This reminds me of the blues, like repeating phrases and words. For example, so small, so small, so small means very, very, very small. The African storyteller begins, we do not really mean, we do not really mean that what we are about to say is true. A story, a story, let it come, let it go. Once, O oh small children, round my knee, there were no stories on earth to hear. All the stories belonged to Niami, the sky god. He kept them in a golden box next to his royal stool. So that would mean there's a whole bunch of books in the box. Well, books or stories, like are stories books? Books hold the stories. Mm -hmm. Anansi the Spider-Man wanted to buy the sky god's stories, so he spun a web up to the sky. When the sky god heard that Anansi wanted what Anansi wanted, he laughed. Tuh, tuh, tuh. The price of my stories is that you bring me Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth, Mbaro, the hornet who stings like fire, and Moesha, the fairy whom men never see. Anansi bowed and answered, I shall gladly pay the price. Twa, 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 chuckled the sky god. How can a weak old man like you, so small, so small, so small, pay my price? But Anansi merely climbed down to earth to find the things that the sky god demanded. Anansi ran along the jungle path, Uridi, 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 till he came to Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. Oho, Anansi, said the leopard, you are just in time to be my lunch. Anansi rep replied, as for that, what will happen will happen. But first, let us play the, the binding, binding game. The leopard, who was fond of games, asked, How is it played? With vine creepers, explained Anansi. I will bind you by your foot and foot. Then I will untie you, and you can tie me up. Very well, growled the leopard, who planned to eat Anansi as soon as it was his turn to bind him. So wait a minute. Is the leopard, like, planning on playing the game, and then letting Anansi go? No, right? Is he going to let Anansi go? No. After binding him up? Mm -mm. No. What's he going to do? He's going to eat him. Yeah. And I make a prediction. Okay. Once Anansi ties up the leopard, I think he's um going to take whatever he needs and not let him go. And he needs the actual leopard, right? Let's see what happens. So Anansi tied the leopard by his foot, by his foot, by his foot, by his foot. Why does it have foot four times? Because he has four feet. Yeah, that makes sense. 
with the vine creeper. Then he said, Now, O Sibo, you are ready to meet the sky god. And he hung the tied leopard in a tree in the jungle. Oh, so he tricked the leopard, didn't he? He's not going to untie the leopard or let the leopard untie himself, right? It's not a game. It's a trick. Mm -hmm. Next, Anansi cut a frond from a banana tree and filled a calabash with water. He crept through the tall grasses, Sora, 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 till he came to the nest of Umbaro, the hornet who sting like fire. Anansi held the banana leaf over his head as an umbrella. Then he poured some of the water in the calabash over his head. Hmm, I wonder why he did that. The rest he emptied over the hornet's nest and cried, It is raining, raining, raining. Should you not fly into my calabash so that the rain will not tatter your wings? Thank you, thank you, hummed the hornets, and they flew into the calabash. Boom! Anansi quickly stopped the mouth of the gourd. Wait a minute, what's going on here? He's tricking them. He is tricking them. How is he tricking them? Hmm. By pretending it's raining. And pretending that he's saving them. Is he saving them? No. He's no. mostly doing the opposite. Exactly. He's collecting them. Now, Mbora, you are ready to meet the sky god, said Anansi. And he hung the calabash full of hornets onto the tree next to the leopard. So he's making his collection of things for the sky god. Now watch this. Anansi now carved a little wooden doll holding a bowl. He covered the doll from top to bottom with sticky latex gum. Then he filled the doll's bowl with pounded yams. Yams? Yams. Yams are like sweet potatoes. Uh. He set the little doll at the foot of a flamboyant tree where fairies like to dance. Anansi tied one end of a vine around the doll's head and holding the other end in his hand, he hid behind a bush. Does this remind you of anything? Yeah. Sticky gum was... was put all over this doll and now he's hiding behind a tree a bush doesn't it remind you of um rare fox and the tar baby mm -hmm. in a little while Mo moesha the fairy whom no man sees came dancing 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 to the foot of the flamboyant tree there she saw the doll holding the bowl of yams. It's not holding the ball. Um, the bowl is just next to. Yeah. So Moesha said, Gum baby, I am hungry. May I eat some of your yams? Anansi pulled at the vine in his hiding place so that the doll seemed to nod its head. So the fairy took the bowl from the doll and ate all the yams. Thank you, gum baby, said the fairy, but the doll did not answer. Don't you reply when I thank you, cried the angered fairy. The doll did not answer. Oh, this really is similar. It is, yeah. Watch this. Gum baby, I'll slap your crying place unless you answer me. What's the crying place? Like where your mouth is? Yeah, yeah. Where the where where a baby would make noise when it's crying. Shouted the fairy, but the wooden doll remained still and silent. Mm. So the fairy slapped her crying place. Pa! Her hand stuck fast to the gum baby's sticky cheek. Let go of my hand or I'll slap you again. Pa! She slapped the doll's crying place with her other hand. Now the fairy was stuck to the gum baby with both hands, and she was furious. 
She pushed against the doll with her feet, and they also stuck fast. Now Anansi came out of hiding. You are ready to meet the sky god, Moesha. And he carried her to the tree where the leopard and the hornets were waiting. Isn't that similar? Mm-hmm. Very slimmer. And now Anansi spun a web round Osibo, Mboro, and Moesha. And then he spun a web to the sky. He pulled up his captives behind him and set them down at the feet of the sky god. Oh, Nayame, said Anansi, bowing low. Here is the price you ask for your stories. Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. Mbaro, the hornets who sting like fire, and Moesha, the fairy whom men never see. Niami, the sky god, called together all the nobles of his court and addressed them in a loud voice. Little Anansi, the spider-man, has paid me the price I ask for my stories. Sing his praise, I command you. From this day and going on forever, proclaim the sky god. My stories belong to Anansi and shall be called spider stories. E e e shouted all the assembled nobles. So Anansi took the golden box of stories back to earth to the people of his village. And when he opened the box, all the stories scattered to the corners of the world, including this one. This is my story, which I have related. If it be sweet, or if it be not sweet, take some elsewhere, and let some come back to me. And that's the end. Look, here's the golden box with all these stories coming out. So the stories are alive things? That's kind of the idea. Like living stories. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs>